In this video, you see me become a victim at the mountain. As well as a bat marker ruining an insane battle. Hello everyone and welcome to Bathurst where you have this happen to you and yeah that's a lot of damage. You also have this happen to you because you get it wrong going down the hill as well as we hit barrier and just avoid an NSXer. As well as having this happen to you once again going down the hill at Bathurst. Ouch and ouch. Well as you can see lots of crashing there. But we did eventually get a good race here at Bathurst. And here we are with that race then. So we started P4. We're in the AMG, which is something we don't really use on a set of course, the Competizione. And uh, we were using it in a stream, which is why you can see my face there on the right hand side. Unfortunately for you folks, you have to witness that. Obviously, my eyeballs are attached to it. So I don't witness it that often. All right, we're going to head towards the start finish line then. Let's start. Well, actually, it's past it. And we're going to be starting in P4. So not too bad of a qualifying session here as we head towards turn one then in this 25-minute race. So LFN daily races are brilliant, okay? They're very intense, very fun. And I have two races for you here. Very intense races, especially this second one. But I really couldn't portray it as much in the video. So do check out the description for the live stream if you do want to check that out. Anyway, so here we can see up ahead we got a Honda absolutely going after the Mercedes there on the inside. We get it slightly wrong just watching that in front of us. Uh, but we do remain in P4 for now with a NSX and a Ferrari behind fighting each other for position as well. As you can see above my face, I'm in Silver Plus. That's my license. There's a safety rating there of 8.44. And my actual rating, so you know what you used to driving rating in Gran Turismo, is an ELO rating in LFM. It is 2,335. I'm going to try and get up to 3,000. Um, it's actually higher now than it was. It's actually been at 2.6. Oh, the NSX. Look at that inside there. I need to stop talking about my rating as the NSX was going for the move. So my rating has actually been as high as 2,600 before we got reported for an incident, which was my fault. I've said it many times. You know, everybody makes mistakes. It was my fault. But we had some crazy dude actually go off on us about 3 million miles an hour. Like, oh, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, we, uh, we forget about that. Now, let's get jumped to this race here where the NSX is going for the move down the inside then uh, towards the chase. And literally, the NSX so good in a straight line there gets the job done. And does he get this up? Oh, just does. And now we've got another Mercedes behind us then. I wanted to get past here. And I had a bit of a run on the NSX. I was like, I'll go around the outside. But uh, yeah, the Mercedes was like, waited. You left that gap open. I'm going to take it off you there. So the uh, number six car... Uh, Bonds Phyllis is that uh, looking to take the position gonna have the inside for turn one of course as we go through here and yet yeah, jobs are good and they get it done we have Kavaka behind us we raised Kavaka in the RCI league what we used to do on Fridays I'm gonna jump back into that at some point um, but Kavaka obviously very quick driver and we were racing them a lot and the video is gonna be able to focus on them a lot this one as well so do keep an eye out for the action coming up as we go into this right-hander then, the Mercedes looking for the move on the SX. Doesn't quite work out. They're going for the cut back here as we head up the hill then. And it's the Mercedes. Nah, Mercedes back to it. I was going to say, too wide there. Never really works. There's always somebody who ends up meeting Barrier. So the Mercedes definitely picking the better decision there, in my opinion. We advance to a run then, and the gaps have opened up a little bit here. 21 minutes of the race to go. Up in the distance there, and NSX was going side by side with a Mercedes. In fact, the NSX is off there, rally crossing there. Uh, so if you didn't know, you can rally cross in a set of course of competition. How about that, folks? Anyway, they lose a couple of positions here as we go in to the left, and then we continue on out. Um, so I want to give a shout out to Roth there in P3 who helped me with the setup. Gave me one initially. And then Joe McCauley, the legend, the Scottish legend, the onion licker, of course, uh, actually helped us out even more with the setup. And we really uh, nailed it down by the end of it. It was really good. So up in the distance there, we have a line of cars. 15 minutes to go in the race. And, you know, we're not losing touch with them. So there's still a fight for P2 on here. And, uh, oh, my word. Oh, brown pants moment there. As we had no idea where Roth was going. We do survive, though. And we're up into P5 now. Happy days. Well, unfortunate for Roth there. Um, they did have a look after. And I believe the driver has been reported there. That was the number one car that was in that incident. Kavaka going down the inside then towards a chase. Doesn't quite work out there. Don't feel like they could outbreak the AMG. So they uh, decided to go for it another day. 
as we catch up to a bat mark here. Car 18, another Honda NSX. We need to try out that car at some point as we go through the left. And they head off there and they actually slow down a lot. Very risky that in, in terms of I have no idea what they're going to do. And I really wanted to get past them. But yeah, I think that was the best decision they could have made there. Uh, continues the race. I mean, Kavaka actually going hammer and tongue at each other here as Kavaka coming back at me. Nine minutes of the race to go. Once again, looking down the inside. Doesn't quite work out for the Ferrari driver there as we go into the left-hander and carry on. So Kavaka came into the stream after and did mention about how we used to race in RCI League. I was like, I didn't recognize that name from somewhere. And it was indeed. It was Laguna Seca actually where we had a really good race with Kavaka. So we're going to leave that corner. Still in P5, but we're going to try and defend this for our lives because we do not want to finish in P6. We really don't. We have eight minutes. Oh, Kavaka. I had a little look there. Doesn't quite work out and we build that gap. So let's advance a bit further on in the race then as we head. Oh, that was a bit of a bump there as we come down the mountain through the right. Over to the left, chuck it in and continue on now. Now, I will say this. The body cam does make the mountain a little bit easier. And I know some of you are like, why don't you use chase cam? Uh, not chase cam, Titch. You don't use that. Use cockpit cam. Well, I just don't like it. It's very, very limited and it's not realistic. I'm sorry, if anyone thinks it's realistic, it's not. As we try and break the slipstream there. Uh, let's have a look. Kavaka flashes me back over, but it's not that realistic. You know, a lot of people sit so far forward in cockpit cam. You might as well be on bonnet cam. Uh, you know, in the actual race car, you'll sat very low down and, and far back, you know, in the middle to get the 50-50 weight distribution. So, <laughs> yeah, even your cameras in cockpit camera are not realistic. Um, so I just go with the bonnet cam. So my face now, you're about to witness my face going to some shock. When I said, oh, bugger. I'm laughing because my fuel, and that was the weirdest edit of my life, my fuel is literally broken. I have two laps of fuel there, and we have three laps of racing to go. Oh, no. I've done it again, folks. Oh, no. I literally, I haven't put enough fuel in. Now, the reason for this was obviously you saw the crashes earlier on. I kept crashing, so I lowered the fuel a little bit because I was like, I've got loads of fuel. Forgetting I'd been in the pits for a lap. Yeah, we've got a bit of a challenge on our hands now to try and keep this position. We are going to have to short shift here as we go over the mountain and really start to... There we go. Look, 7,000 revs. You revved the nuts out of this thing, which I didn't realize when I first started racing it. As we head down the mountain, and I've really got to try and survive this and just get to the end. After two bad results from just crashing, I do not want to lose any more rating as we go through the left and the right-hander. I'm going to head down towards the bottom of the mountain then in towards Forrest's elbow here and we do that completely wrong complete understeer there absolutely terrible um so kavaka so close behind me here at this point i am trying to still save fuel here i need to get to the end here i do not want to lose out on more rating kavaka then going towards that left hand side looking to get the position from me here i'm dropping down to p6 of course it's p6 it couldn't be any other position here as I coast now towards the corner. Again, just trying to save that little bit of fuel as we go through here and continue on. So at this point, I'm thinking, right, let's stay in the slipstream of Kavaka. Let's try and at least save a bit of fuel that way as well as we head into the last corner. But Kavaka clips the grass there, heads off to the realms, avoids the barrier, thankfully. But we're back up into P5. One lap of fuel, two laps to go. We're using 3.6 liters a lap. It's not looking good. Let's be honest with you. It is not looking good. And I did not use engine maps. So we continue on out that corner. Uh, and we are going to look to advance towards the end. Then 36 seconds of the race to go. We're going on to the final lap. We're down to 3.5 litres of fuel per lap. And we had 3.5 litres on the line. So fuel saving. We're doing 3.5 litres. And we had 3.5 litres. This is going to be one hell of a last lap. I hope you're ready for this, folks. Sit back, relax. Enjoy this one because Kavaka is coming 0.7 seconds behind me here. The Ferrari has to catch up at this point with me struggling on fuel. Look at that coasting towards this right-hander. I'm literally trying to save every drop of fuel here to get me towards the end. And I need a bit more fuel on the straights in case I'm ahead of Kavaka at the straight. Maybe I can defend. Who knows? As we go in to the left then. Continue on out. Kavaka getting closer and closer. 0.5 seconds now. So Kavaka can't overtake over the mountain. Very difficult to do that. There's no space here at all. So this is where I can save a little bit more fuel. A little bit more. A little bit more. Notice I'm changing it 6,900 revs now. We're really trying to save that fuel as we go over the mountain here now. And we start to head down the hill. 
And again, we're just going to let the car roll this time. We're hardly touching that throttle. Let the car roll down, braking where we need to. And roll, roll, roll. And now we accelerate out of there. We beat it out of there as fast as we can. Heading towards Forest Elbow. Then we are still in the lead. This is looking good so far. But we still have fuel <laughs> worries here. 1.4 litres to go. Can we make it? So we're going to start using the revs here now. We want to try and keep this position. Keep P5. It would be a good result here. So I'm over to the left-hand side. I'm now going to take the... Uh, sorry, not racing line. The defensive line here. Because... I broke the slipstream just for that second or so. It helped out massively as we're looking to now slowly head towards that racing line. Head over towards the right-hand side then. Kavaka looking, looking, looking. Doesn't quite work out for them as we head into the left end. We clip the curb and continue on out. We have 0.4 litres of fuel left. And you can see me looking at the fuel. This is so sketchy as we head towards the last corner then. 0.2 litres left. As we go through that left hander, 0.1 litres. We can roll to the line now. We've done it, folks. And you can see how happy I am. Yes, we did it. We managed to fuel save enough there. We were so far down on fuel. It was unbelievable. But my word, that was actually incredible. It's a good race, Vigavaka. It really was a good race. A fair play to you as well. P5, happy days. But it wasn't the only race that we did that day. This was a very intense race. Now, this was even more intense than that fuel one, trust me. Uh, and as I say, do check out the description for the live stream of this race to watch it fully because it was mad intense, this one. So we're starting P3. This time on the left-hand side of the circuit. Kavaka goes defensive straight away here. So I have to lift early then. In towards the left we go. And I'm side by side with a BMW here as we leave that corner. We get good acceleration out the corner. And we do get ahead of that BMW then. So we can get in the slipstream of Kavaka. Hopefully it just solid, solidifies. Is that the word? Uh, P3 for now. And then we can look at what we can do going forward. So we go defensive as we head towards the end of the straight then. Uh, it's never good to go on the outside here. I've tried it a few times. BMW driver tried it. And they actually lose a position there to the other BMW driver from TX3. We haven't seen them around for a while. Uh, that team, I've raced them for a while now. The BMW have a cheeky little cutback, but I knew what was going to happen there. So you saw me just slow it down a little bit more and make sure that cutback wasn't possible. As we head up the mountain then for the first time in this race. A lot brighter this one, a lot sunnier. As we go down and through this left-hander. I have binned it there once by clipping the curb. And we head over this little bump here. Now you're meant to do this flat, but I was always scared to do it flat. Joe was telling me to do it flat. As we head down the mountain then, that BMW ever closer here. And Kavak has built up a nice gap. And the Honda in the lead, my word. They're three seconds ahead. They're flying. They were flying in quality. They're 59. Whereas I was just in the early two minutes. But even so, I can see a 59 on this track. Look at that rear view. The BMW takes a walloping into that wall. Which gives us the gap we need to break away. Now we advance literally nearly into halfway into this race. 16 minutes to go. And you can see the BMW is caught up. And we're still behind Kavaka here. So we've been chasing and sweating so hard to catch up to Kavaka in this race and really have a good race. As we go over the crest of the hill then, notice I'm getting more ballsy there as I went over the hill. I'm trying to hold that throttle down a little bit longer to try and keep the speed up here as we start to head down again through the dip. But look how close we're getting here. This is where Bonnet Cam just helps so, so much. It's so, so nice. And that we head to Forest Elbow again. Oh, BMW having a look here. And they clip the wall again. That was a bit, was a bit of a dodgy attempt of a move there. It's not really the place to go for a move. As we advance another 10 minutes into the distance. And look how close we are to Kavaka. We actually skimmed the wall there. We skimmed the wall. And look how close we are. Look at the, look at the lap times. This is in race pace as well. We're absolutely flying here. As we get closer and closer to Kavaka. 0.4 seconds now the gap. It's coming down, folks. It's coming down. As we head down for his, el to el for his elbow as well. And into the left we go. 0.35 up on our lap time. That's incredible here. And that lap time is coming down. So these are good laps, you know. I'm trying to put in the pace here. With 1.7 seconds ahead of BMW. Kavaka going for the smart. Breaking the slipstream move there on the straight like I did earlier on. As we head towards the chase then. And uh, taking the full line there. Through the right-hander we go. And I have no significance there to break at. But I'm using the crane on the left-hand side instead. There's always a brake marker. Eh? There's always a brake marker you can find. Notice there, we nearly had a potential of 2 minute point three there. But just a bit slow out of that corner. In towards the last one. We go, excuse me, I got the hiccups here. I had some tang fastics just before. And they're obviously coming back at me here. So, we are getting closer here to Kavaka. 2 minute point five there on the lap times in race pace. That is quick for me, trust me. 
Through the left we go and we continue on. So 0.3 seconds, the gap here to Kavaka. As I say, this this race live was unbelievable because it's sweating for full 20 minutes by this point. A full 20 minutes of sweating. Incredible. Uh, so we're going to head towards this right-hander then. And we're getting closer and closer. Look how close. We can actually just literally look up the exhaust now of Kavaka. Uh, heading up this left. And we have to lift off a little bit. Not really an overtaking place here. Not unless you want to crash into them. That is for sure. Through the left we go. Heading up the mountain. So if I'm this close going onto the straight, we've got them. We've got them, folks. Through the right-hander we go. And getting as close to that barrier as we can. Down this little dip here. Slight lift. Go towards the left-hand side. And the understeer just comes in from the dirty air. Yeah, we didn't want that. We advance to a lap later there. And you can see um, BMW in the distance. Anyway, we go charging down the hill. And look at that BMW spinning out of control. Kavik hits them full on. We hit them as well. The BMW behind doesn't hit them here. So really unfortunate. That's 22 minutes of hard, solid racing. And then a bat marker makes a mistake right in front of us and causes absolute carnage. Oh, my word. Let's see the damage on the straight then. Uh, the leader, 11.7 seconds ahead. My word, they are flown in this race. Uh, so I've got 13 seconds of damage there. And Kavaka's even worse. I mean, look at the speed drop for Kavaka here. Now, it is unbelievable. So at this point, I knew how damaged Kavaka was. I was damaged as well. I knew I had lost a lot of speed here. Through the right we go in towards the breaking zone. We do outbreak them into this corner. We leave a little bit of a gap there on the left hand side for them. We're up into P2 then. Can we survive this P2? Uh, Kavaka losing another place there to the BMW. We've got two laps to hold off the BMW here. There is a possibility we can do this. The BMW launches it there. My word, that would have been a, a move and a half if they'd made that work. So we've got two and a half, two and a, well, it's two laps, isn't it? Two and a half minutes, two laps. What can we do? We have enough fuel at least. You can read that down in the bottom right hand side. Kavaka's gone off there in the background, really struggling with that damage. Here we go then. So I'm over to the left hand side then. And then I break the slipstream to the right. That's my defensive move done and dusted. I can obviously retake that racing line if needs be, but I'm staying on the right hand side here. I am not giving up this position as we head towards the right hander then. And in we go. And we're going to have to be careful here. Keep it on the inside. Remember, overtake around the outside on this corner. Very difficult then. We leave that corner. And I wanted to come across, but I couldn't tell if they were there or not. Just because of ping and all that good stuff. And, well, for now, we're keeping it there. It's good side-by-side -side action with the BMW driver here of Congretel. And we're still in P2. We're doing not doing too bad here, folks. We're just going to survive one and a half laps at this point. There's no moves being made over the mountain, so we can keep this for now. Just take that racing line. Take the line that we need. We know down in the early part of the speed we're fine. When we try and get to the top end, all hell breaks loose with the car and we start to lose it. Heading down the mountain now, then. All we have to do is survive, remember. All we have to do is survive. Somebody's binned it up ahead. We had a yellow flag there. That's changed back to a green flag. Got slow car ahead, apparently. As we continue on through the dipper, then. It's 0.3 seconds, 0.4 seconds. It's, it's going up and down like a yo-yo, that gap. Do we have to go? In fact, you can have a look at the delta there. 2.4 seconds off our normal lap time. That's how much damage we've got here. So we're leaving that corner then. And it's all about defending. Whether we can defend here, heading towards the chase. And I'm always to the left side because I wanted to be on the inside for the chase. And uh, yeah, it's just a bit too late here. The car, the BMW already alongside here. So you can see how much the damage has impacted us as we head towards the braking zone. But you never know. We could force a mistake in the BMW driver. That's obviously the next goal here. Try and put pressure on them to at least force a mistake. Like we did with Kavikor in the previous race where Kavikor just clipped the grass here and towards the last corner. Then in we go. And nothing really happening here. They go a little bit deep, but nothing major. We're about to start the final lap of the race. And of course, I do want to survive this as well. P3 would still be a good result, but P2 would be even better as we head into the left then and continue on out. And the BMW gets a really good run there. Really good run. In fact, too much of a good run for us. Remember, we've got the mountain coming up where you can't overtake. So I'm just going to lose that gap. What I'm going to do is advance towards the finish where we do finish in P3 in the end. Pretty gutting that that race came to a, like a, such an anti-climax. Because it was on for such a good climate. I mean, we were getting so much closer to Kavika. It could have been a grand finale there. 
on that last lap. But even so, here's the instant that uh, we're talking about. So the BMW just gets it wrong going over the skyline there. And literally, it's a mistake everybody has made. I made it in the, uh, that you saw earlier on in the, in the video. And yeah, here again. So Kamika can't even see the BMW until it's too late. So Kamika sees BMW. It's spinning out of control. The BMW driver has no control there whatsoever. Um, so looking at it from my perspective, I don't see them until now. Now I see them. I'm hard on the brakes. Not much I can do. I've just got to follow Kavika there and hope Kavika clears the way. This BMW, though, what a lucky sod they are. They come through. Look at that. There's just a BMW size gap. No damage at all. Obviously, we saw them whack the wall earlier on, but yeah. Kavika can't see them at this point, can they? They literally can't see them. They're not there. It is non existent. According to Kavika, the BMW's taking it. <laughs> and then you see the BMW like that, and they're full on the brakes. And at this point, they're trying to guess where the BMW is going to go, and it's too late. There's not really much that Kavika can do there. It is what it is. And Kavika said that as well. But at the time, it's so frustrating because we were having such an insane race. Do go check it out in the description. But that is it for me, folks. I do hope you've enjoyed this Bathurst video. Plenty more to come in terms of ACC and Gran Turismo as well. So do subscribe to the channel to stay in touch with all that content. As I say, that is it for me, folks. Do have a good week's racing. And I hope to see you in another video on live stream very soon.